Nick Hoyer, Nick Hoyer, Nick Hoyer. What do you know? It's your uh, second marriage? My second marriage. How dare you? How dare you? Me personally, I want to get married, but... Uh, I think maybe your face is a problem too. Yeah. <laughs> this is the first time I had uh, food in Mongolia that wasn't meat. All right. Oh! <laughs> How does uh, American culture influence Canadian culture? I think American culture influences everybody, unfortunately. Except North Korea. Well, I think even North Korea. Apparently Kim Jong-un loves his American movies. This is Newfoundland and Labrador. That's our Mongolian friend. <laughs> Zolo. Do you plan to, to have uh, kids? It's none of your damn business, Zolo. What kind of show is this? Come on in, Brian. All right. All right. Welcome to Gear. Please close the door. Okay. I will. Thank you. Uh, so this is a uh, Mongolian gear. Have you been into Mongolian gear? No, this is my first time. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a quick uh, lesson on uh, Mongolian gear. Okay. So we always walk uh, clockwise. All right. And we don't walk between uh, those two arcs. All right. And that part is the part for guests. So please take a seat over there. Okay. Thank you. Ah, it's cold outside. <laughs> yeah, it's really cold outside. It's not in here. It's really nice in here. It's toasty. Reminds me of my grandmother's house, the wood stove. Sit here? Yeah, okay, thank you. Welcome to Gear Talk. I'm your host, Zolo, and today's guest is Mr. Brian Aylward. And Mr. Brian Aylward won in 2016 the best comedian of Canada. He has 14 years of experience as a comedian. He did almost 3,000 shows, and just recently, he just shot his special Big in Asia in Mongolia at UB Comedy Club. Hello, Mr. Ryan. Hey, man. Nice to see you, Zolo. Senbano, everybody. Thanks for having me. It's our pleasure. And uh, let me pour you some Mongolian milk tea. All right, great. I feel underdressed. You look good. <laughs> thank you. I had to wear layers. It's cold. <laughs> oh, thank Please. you. All right. So what is this? Oh, this is a traditional Mongolian milk tea. It's with, okay. uh, with salt, with a black tea. Okay. Have a sip. All right. Mm. It's really oh, yeah. good for yeah. the cold winter. Mm -hmm. So, uh, just in the introduction, I would like to ask which pronoun used to call you? <laughs> we can just go with uh, with him. With him. Yes. Him or he. Okay. So, um, so you shot your special here in Mongolia. Yes. Please tell why Mongolia. Uh, well, this is my second time in Mongolia. I came here earlier this year in February. I just love it. I'm fascinated with this country, the people, uh, the hospitality was amazing. Uh, UB Comedy Club was the nicest venue. I think I've played like 21 countries now in Asia, and it's the nicest venue I've ever seen. And I just, yeah, wanted to come back. So here we are. Yeah, you know, you love Mongolia and I do. as you might know, a horse is a symbol of Mongolia. Yes. You know, the Mongolian uh, warriors in 13th century, they used to ride horses and we love horses and mm -hmm. also we think they are delicious. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Mongolia is badass. And symbol of Canada is, uh, is a beaver. Yeah, it's not as cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as cool. You can't ride a beaver. So you stem from Newfoundland, which I pronounced Newfoundland. So uh, why do you pronounce it Newfoundland? I don't know why, Zolo. I have no idea why. Just pronunciation, just accent. See, this is Newfoundland and Labrador. Mm -hmm. People from Labrador watching will be upset if we don't mention Labrador. So I read about the history of Canada. Yes. And Canada is a country of immigrants. Mm -hmm. One in five Canadians uh, is an immigrant. Mm -hmm. And also Newfoundland. In, a in 19th century, the Irish, after Irish famine, the Scots and the English would immigrate to Newfoundland. So could you tell about your roots in Canada? <laughs> well, that's basically it, I think. My uh, roots go back to Ireland. Mm -hmm. uh, my father traced our family tree back years ago, I think, like to Waterford, Cork area in Ireland. And uh, yeah, I think you know more than me. I didn't know I had to study for this talk show, Zolo. I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, after the potato famine, a lot of Irish people came to Newfoundland and settled, also the Scottish and English, and um, they found their potatoes. Now they're happy. Especially when I look, you know, at, at your face, mm -hmm. at your head, I see Ireland, <laughs> a big potato. Wow. Wow, so rude. I just see a big Mongolian Polish face in front of me. That's what I see. <laughs> I, I used to say that because I grew up in, uh, in Poland, I'm uh, a banana. Right. Because, you know, I'm white inside and yellow yes. outside. Am I your biggest headed guest yet? 
Yes. Good. Okay. And um, you have almost 14 years uh, of experience as a comedian. Yes, 14 years last week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Canada is known as a country for many people uh, where they would have second chance to start living. Mm -hmm. And your second chance was to go to live in Asia and yeah. work as an English teacher. Yeah, kind of. So how did you uh, decide to move from Canada to Asia? Because it's a, it's a big thing. Yeah. Um... Graduated university with a degree in community studies, which is absolutely useless. And uh, they were hiring English teachers in Asia at the time, a lot of English teachers, and I thought it would be something to do, and all you needed was a university degree, which I had. Yeah, I just decided to try something different, and I ended up in South Korea. And your, your beginning of a stand-up started with a bet. Tell us about that. Yeah, uh, yeah, with an ex-girlfriend of mine. Um, she used to smoke cigarettes, and I didn't smoke. And uh, we made a bet if she quit smoking for one month, then I would have to try stand-up. Because I always wanted to do stand-up, but I just never I just never had the nerve. I was always too scared. And um, so anyway, she quit for mm -hmm. a month, and I did it. And I've been doing it ever since. Wow, so when was uh, your defining moment when you decided, I'm going to be a stand-up comedian? Uh, well, I started November. 11th, 2005. Um, five years later, I quit my job teaching and became full time. So, yeah, I decided to go for it, move back to Toronto and just go for it. So, five years in. Five years in uh, when you became a pro. And tell me, because being a comedian myself, I know it's a, it's a lonely road, it's a lots of hardship, rejection, yes. and how it is to be a comedian in Canada. I think, like, you know, real comedians don't have a choice, it's a compulsion, you know, like, Especially in the beginning, you do so poorly, like my show, I would have a bad show and then do another bad show and another bad show, but I kept coming back, so uh, I'm a sucker for punishment, I guess. Mm. Yeah. So, I'm like, where are gonna, are these Chinese acrobats going to work? Like, what is this? But my favorite part was the old lady on the back of the bike just knitting, just knitting. <laughs> And I remember uh, you were saying that there was uh, a big issue with uh, Sirius FM in, in Canada with uh, comedians not being paid royalties. Could you tell uh, more about that? Yeah, I don't know the whole situation. Sirius XM, yeah, they had uh, situations where they had bought, um, you know, they had taped different galas and festivals from years ago and they, they would use those, those sets. And it was ended up being like people like Jeff Foxworthy and all these, you know, rich type comedians. And uh, a lot of Canadian comedians weren't getting their airplay. And uh, a lot of comedians really depend on that money. Uh, but they've changed since. They, they, they've definitely, uh, because there was a lot of backlash by the comedy community, and now um, they're helping Canadian comedians a lot. Shout out to SiriusXM. <laughs> You said your favorite uh, comedian is Patrice O'Neill. Yeah, I told you that, yeah. I mean, I like watching lots of people, but Patrice is... Uh, nobody makes me laugh like he did, for sure. What's so unique for you about Patrice O'Neill? I just think his honesty is just amazing. And um, he's just funny, man. Like, I mean, even Opie and Anthony, I don't know if you know about Opie yeah. and Anthony. I mean, there's hours and hours of him on there just being hilarious. And it's just like throwaway material for him. I mean, he's just, he's effortless. And you said you, uh, you, you do uh, 200 shows uh, every year. Yeah, I average about that. So what's your, uh, like, I would say, uh, relationship uh, status? <laughs> what, with my wife? Yeah, yes. I have a wife, I'm married. Yeah, she's very uh, supportive, she understands. Uh, she comes to a lot of my shows, uh, comes on tour with me whenever she can. She's a teacher, so she has, you know, her summers off and lots of other vacations and uh, she's very supportive, I'm very lucky. It's your uh, second marriage? My second marriage, how second dare you, how dare you? But my favorite <laughs> marriage, she's my favorite, guys. My favorite marriage. Just I'm lucky she gets it. She's very funny herself too, and she knows how much of an idiot I am. I can't help myself, so uh, <laughs> she knows what she what she signed up for. We've been together five years, and it's been awesome. Wow, because uh, me personally, I want to get married, but uh, yeah. in my late thirties, because I think I'm like too immature uh, to get yeah. married. And I think maybe your face is a problem too. Yeah, yeah. Especially here. <laughs> I, I had a, I had I had a pimple here, and it was like a ah, orphan right. orphan, you know at in the whole of, uh, of my face. Of your face, that's all right. Yeah. You can get makeup, you can put a little makeup on it. Yeah, I find a woman with a pimple on the other side. That's a perfect, uh, that's a perfect uh, solution. Yeah. So, I know you have tattoos. So how many tattoos do you have? Four. Four? Yeah, how do you know this? I know you have it's a creepy. tattoo of uh, Newfoundland mm -hmm. with the Irish flag. Yeah, I have a tattoo of the island, yeah, here on my arm. And, um, and it, what's the Chinese sign you have? Here? I have a Chinese sign for truth, and it does say truth. I've checked it out, I've researched it. Made sure it didn't say anything stupid like bird or horse. <laughs> So why did you decide uh, to put the truth as a tattoo? Um, I'd been drinking 
and uh, it was in Thailand, like maybe 10 years ago. Uh, it was kind of cheesy, but I like it. It was just, that was when I first kind of moved to Asia. And um, yeah, I kind of lived my truth, man. I was like, I'm, you know, I was back home. I wasn't happy. I was just kind of doing what you're supposed to do. You know, go to university, get a job, you know, save up for your house, all that bullshit. And it wasn't me. I didn't, I wasn't happy. And uh, when I moved to Asia, I was free and I just became the person I think I'm supposed to be. And uh, that's my truth. So that's what I'm following. You come from Newfoundland, Canada, where the climate is cold as Mongolia, and now you yeah. live in, in Thailand, which is uh, wet, warm, yes. sun, beaches. Yeah. So you are a warm guy, I guess. Yeah, I am now. I'm, I'm converted. That's why I'm wearing layers today. It's like Labrador. I'm sure this is what today feels like Labrador. It's minus <laughs> 29 outside. Um, yeah, I've been, uh, my wife and I, Holly, have been in Thailand for four years, so we're spoiled now. We're never going home. So when you came to Mongolia, you felt like in Canada at home? Yeah, it was kind of a nice break because I know I'm going back to Thailand tomorrow. So <laughs> it's, it's good for four days. So tell me, like, uh, how do you feel about uh, the filming of your uh, special at UB Comedy? Well, uh, well, you know, you were there, you hosted. Uh, we did two <laughs> nights. The first night was horrible. It was so stressful. It just didn't go the way we wanted it. And uh, then we had one more chance. And uh, last night, I mean, you were there. It was awesome. I couldn't believe it. I worked out. Uh, the crowd was great. I love that club. Uh, I'm really happy with how it went. I can't wait for everybody to see it. I loved uh, when you mentioned uh, the filming of uh, Richard Pryor's special mm -hmm. live on Sunset. Because mm -hmm. you said that on the first day he totally bombed, right? Yeah, I'm certainly not comparing myself to him, but yeah, it kind of inspired me. I realized that recently on, a, on a, a documentary that was done about him. I forget the name now. Yeah, he did live on Sunset Strip the first night. Um, he just didn't have it. Um, he walked off stage, said I'm sorry, and he just left after like 20 minutes. People were booing. I mean, it was horrible. And then the next night he came back and it's one of the greatest specials of all time. So, you know, like I said, I'm not comparing myself to him, but I was like, okay, it's possible that we can turn this around. And by the way, we're getting the, uh, my special Big in Asia translated into Mongolian. So for the Mongolian fans, they can watch it. Wow. And see that. Yeah. That's a great news. Yeah, because I wanted, I mean, you know, it's kind of an ode to Mongolia. They were nice enough. I mean, the hospitality has been amazing. I love it here. So I want to give back to the, you know, Mongolian people. Canada is a country, a very peaceful country, and Canada helps uh, when, there, when there is a war going on uh, in the world and many people move into Canada. And mm -hmm. Mongolians, we are very warrior-like. Yeah. But we can't be a uh, superpower right now. <laughs> right now? Yeah, we're waiting. And you know the... Waiting for the horses to get bigger. Yes. Albert Einstein, he had a wording that uh, after World War III, mm -hmm. the people would fight again with uh, stick and stone. So I'm waiting until yeah. that moment because we, we will be able to conquer the world again. Well, listen, that's one of the reasons I'm here. My wife and I, we're looking at, uh, we're looking at places. This might be our new place in this year. <laughs> It's the most, uh, the least populated country in the world. So I think when World War III pops off, this is the place to be, Mongolia. You are always welcome to- uh, I'm coming to back. My, oh, my, I'm living my in the mountains. I already got it planned out. <laughs> Holly's ready. I wanted to talk about the best kind of tour because you did 10 week uh, long tour along Canada. Yep. And Canada is the second biggest country in the world. Mm -hmm. So tell me, when did you uh, start uh, to think about the idea of doing the best kind of tour? Yeah, best kind comedy tour. Shout out to the boys. What do you have, boys? Um, yeah, we just, um, I met up with a couple of younger comics from my hometown, uh, Colin Hollett and Mike Lynch. And um, we started doing kind of smaller tours in in provinces in Newfoundland and Alberta and then we decided why not try to take it across country and um, then we got a tour manager Brent McNamara who's amazing uh, Brent Mac events and um, yeah it's Canada is uh, it's a beast the tour we did um, over 15,000 kilometers in the car in nine weeks 15,000 kilometers yeah. yeah in nine weeks so it was a lot that was first year and this year we did a little less because we flew from Toronto to Calgary but we're definitely doing 10,000 kilometers in the car so it's a lot to go but we're so lucky um, a lot of people come out especially Newfoundlanders come out out in all the different places. Um, it's like what you guys have with UB, you travel around the world, Mongolians come out. We kind of have that. A lot of Newfoundlanders come out. They're all over Canada and uh, the support's been amazing. And we're doing another one next year, number three. So awesome. Wow, so what was the, the biggest show uh, of the best kind of tour? Uh, first year we did a, a, an arena just outside mm -hmm. my hometown, uh, 2,000 people. Yeah, that was amazing. Uh, this year we did um, a convention center in uh, St. John's in the capital city, 1400. So those are the biggest shows. And you know, we had shows from like 600, 500, 300, all over. But uh, almost all the shows were sold out, mostly theaters across the country, a few comedy clubs. Um, yeah, we're so grateful. It's been amazing. We're blown away by the support. I want to um, 
ask you what would be your best advice for new aspiring comedians? Uh, don't quit. Um, don't quit and write. Write as much as you can and don't quit. Uh, half the battle is not quitting. Because mm -hmm. uh, you never know. You could be, you know, um, you could be horrible year two and then you could be amazing by year nine if you just dedicate yourself. Uh, and be nice to everybody uh, you meet because you actually meet them over and over again. The comedy community, even worldwide, is actually kind of small. There's only really a few thousand of us in the world. So be nice to people you meet because you're going to see them again. And nobody hates that person. Someone who's nice and works hard, that person usually does well. Yeah, um, I really appreciate it uh, when you did uh, your workshop for us. Uh, yeah, thank when, you. When you. When you came for uh, first time, and it was a great workshop. And many comedians uh, they actually uh, took the took the lessons and advices you gave. In, yeah, uh, man. It. I've only done that a few times. I normally don't like doing it. Like I don't really tell people how to do comedy because you can't. I just kind of just share my uh, supposed wisdom with everybody, and uh, everybody was great at that workshop. They had great questions and they were very engaged. Um, yeah, I was happy to. Do it. We Mongolians, we uh, we enjoy uh, stories, mm -hmm. and I noticed that you are a comedian who tells stories, and within stories there are jokes. Mm -hmm. So, did you start with uh, with stories, or were you a one-liner comedian? Yeah, I was wasn't that? a one-liner, but I started with just yeah, shitty jokes. <laughs> I started with bad jokes, man. I just uh, and I just got graduated into storytelling. Like where I come from in Newfoundland, Labrador, um, storytelling is part of the, of 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 life. Uh, it's part of everyday life and uh, all my friends tell good stories, my brothers, like it's just what we do. And I just graduated to that eventually. Um, it's not easy, you know, to start telling stories. Um, you got to get used to the silence and then, but uh, yeah, I'm in year 14 now. So I started telling stories maybe year eight. Mm -hmm. uh, good stories before they were kind of just bad stories or just kind of shitty jokes. But uh, yeah, so I've been doing stories now for about five years. So welcome back, and uh, Brian, I would like to introduce you to some of the Mongolian uh, food specialties. All right, let's do it. But uh, would you like some more tea? Sure, yeah, it's delicious. So what's the beverage in uh, Newfoundland? Uh, rum. Rum? <laughs> yeah. Screech, we call it Screech, Newfoundland Screech. Newfoundland Screech? All right. Mm. That's nice. So so what you see here is, uh, is a clotted cream. Okay. And we have uh, a dried curd, okay. it's called arroz, and this is a uh, hashmak, and it's made from uh, fried uh, clotted cream, flour, and uh, sugar, and raisins. Okay. It's, uh, it's really delicious. And this is a homemade bread called borzak. Mm -hmm. I take a borzak and I put on it clotted cream. Okay. I'll do the same. Mm. This is the first time I had a... Uh... Food in Mongolia that wasn't meat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it's the first time. All right. You know what? You know what's special about uh, Mongol? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it really scared it's really delicious. Me. <laughs> what I wanted to say about uh, Mongolian diet? Mm -hmm. It's all based on uh, geography and the climate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Because we are nomads, we are herders of uh, of animals. Mm -hmm. Our main diet is based meat and dairy. Mm -hmm. We don't eat uh, too much uh, vegetables. No, I noticed that. There can't be many vegetarians in Mongolia, are there? I think uh, there, there are some. I have, uh, I have a few friends who are uh, vegetarians. Mm. And, um, they live in the city, but they're too weak to survive in the country. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> yeah, right? We Mongols believe that when animal eats uh, a grass and herb, mm -hmm. and we eat that animal. Mm -hmm. That you eat the grass? We, yeah, we get the nutrition. Yeah, I heard a saying that uh, um, meat is for men and grass is for animals. That's a Mongolian saying or no? Am I making, am I making that up? Maybe, I'm not, I'm not sure. So um, I would like you to try, to try maybe hatmuk. Okay. It's this guy. The bread is delicious. Well, do you want me to try this? Yeah. The curd or this? It's hard. Okay. Like hard, but do I just eat it like this? Mm-hmm. No? Okay. Actually, this is called Edzgi. Okay. Edzgi? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good. Mmm. I like that. This is Arut. You want to go for it? Sure. Yeah. It's a bit hard. Okay. Looks like caramel, but I'm sure it's not. Oh. Oh, shit. No. That is, um, that is not delicious. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's all right. Mm. Well, okay. It's very um, sour taste because it's based on the on the yogurt. I think I need Mongolian teeth to bite this. <laughs> My Canadian teeth are too weak. So what's the cuisine in uh, Newfoundland? We boil a lot of food, like in Mongolia. You boil a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, we have a thing called Jigs dinner. Jigs dinner. Yeah, it's like boiled uh, salt meat, boiled you know b uh, boiled vegetables, mm -hmm. peas pudding. Yeah, we boil everything. We just throw it in a pot and boil it. After living almost a decade in uh, Asia, mm -hmm. so how do you cope with Asian food? I think I just broke my face. Um, <laughs> I love Asian food. Yeah, and Mongolia had boiled sheep's head. That was interesting. While I was playing a game with sheep ankle bones. Yeah, sucks to be a Mongolian sheep. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, because for uh, how are you eating that? Actually, it's very delicious. Um, I, I love Etsy and I didn't eat it in a while, so. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna switch up to this. What's this called again? Etsy. 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 Sounds Russian. Yes. Uh, as you said, uh, Mongolian language is uh, like Korean speaking speaking Russian, right? Yeah, like Korean speaking Russian. Well, you oh. said it's like I think conquering the world is easier than learning Mongolian. Yeah. This is good. I like this. I have fermented mare's milk, but the cold version. I didn't really like that. This is really good. I love this bread. It's delicious. What do you call this? It's called Bartok. Bartok? Mm hmm It's delicious. All right, bring in the sheep's head. Yeah, um, we'll not bring the sheep's head. We're gonna bring okay. hash milk. All right. Taste this. It's uh, sweet. Okay, okay. It's delicious. Oh, yeah. That's a different texture. That's sweet. It tastes like almost like a candy. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. People are just watching us eat? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hello, everybody. Brian, mm -hmm. Mongolia borders with China, uh -huh. and Canada borders with the United States of America. Unfortunately, yeah. How does uh, American culture influence Canadian culture? I think American culture influences everybody. Mm -hmm. Again, unfortunately. Um, Except, except North Korea. <laughs> except North Korea. Well, I think even North Korea. Apparently, Kim Jong-un loves his American movies. And he loves the Chicago Bulls. <laughs> um, seems like whatever America does, Canada's not too far behind. In Canada, we love pointing at America and saying, look how bad they are, look how bad. But uh, Canada and America is very similar. Let's say I want to move uh, to Northern America. Okay. Why I should uh, choose Canada? Um, I think people are generally nicer. Um, it's a beautiful country. It's absolutely beautiful. America is very beautiful too. I lived in America. Um, again, Canada is beautiful, man. You'd love it. It's very big and grand like Mongolia. You'll, you'd, you'd, uh, anytime you come to Newfoundland, uh, the hospitality is similar to Mongolia at any time. Oh, I love it. Yeah, man. You show up anytime. We'll take care of you. So tell me when will you move uh, from uh, Bangkok to Newfoundland and I'm going to visit. Well, I'm never moving to Newfoundland. <laughs> uh, I love home. I'll always visit. Uh, I'm moving to Mongolia. I'm telling you, I have an exit strategy. As soon as it gets crazier, I'm moving to the mountains. I'm getting myself a gear. You said you can build one of these in like an hour? Yes. You bring your friends or with your family members, uh, with, your, right. with your cousins. And you have a huge family, right? Yeah, I have a big family, yeah. My father was only one of two, actually, uh, but my mother was one of ten. So that's a pretty big family. Irish Catholic. Irish Catholic. Yeah. And, um, so I wanted to ask you uh, in the end, do you plan to, to have uh, kids? Uh, it's none of your damn business, Solo. What kind of show is this? <laughs> no, I'm not sure. We're not sure. Yeah, right now we're uh, loving life, my wife and I. We love to travel and uh, we get to come to beautiful places like this. So uh, I'm not sure. I'm waiting for your uh, decision when you will uh, adopt me, that I can go uh, to Canada. You're adorable, Solo. I'll, we'll adopt you. We'll start the paperwork right now. We'll do it. We'll bring you back to Canada. We'll like build a little house outside for you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you, like... No, no, you, you're not gonna build a house. You're gonna uh, build my gear. You know, yeah, in your in your backyard. Yeah, a little small one, like a doghouse. Yeah. And put a chain on. <laughs> and let you run around the yard. That's our Mongolian friend. <laughs> Zolo. Oh my God. And we'll just we'll bring this stuff here. We'll just throw it to you. <laughs> yeah, just feed you like an animal. Oh. Yeah, all okay. the racist friends can come over and have a party. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course not. Anytime you want to come, man. Yeah, we'll adopt you. Thank you for uh, for coming to Mongolia, and it was a genuine pleasure to have you at uh, Gear Talk. And yeah. I wish you all the best with your special. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Brian. Thanks, man. My pleasure. It's great to be here. Love it. Bye, Sla. Bye, Sla. How to say goodbye in, in Canadian? Goodbye. Okay, we did it. Goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. goodbye.
<laughs> frozen. <laughs> you back <laughs> off. <laughs> frozen tea. Oh, I I eat you in the